All right, so I'm here with Dr. Tom Jones. Tom, thanks for uh, being with us. So here's, here's my first question. What is the Discovery Roundtable? Well, it, it begins a journey about 10 years ago. It's all your fault. So <laughs> when you introduced HERT 2.0 by Chap Clark um, and the concept of an intergenerational ministry, this has been the fall, my recollection, fall of 2011. It captured something I've been involved in most of my life, which is serving underserved students as a university professor and in my life as a private Christian and citizen. Um, and the book itself, which turned out to be a bestseller, there's a quote there that says, the youth of our culture have been deeply wounded by our collective neglect and adult self-focus. Does, does that sound incriminating? Young people need adults to understand what they're going through and people to care about them without a personal agenda. That is so startlingly missing in today's the two generations that are, that are youngest. It's shocking. And then in 2017, the Barna World Vision Study, where they looked at 15,000 students uh, in 23 countries, discovered among many things that only 60, or excuse me, 68% said they had no one who believed in them as an individual. That's hurtful. And 32% said that they had someone who loved them or they cared for them, only 32%. So two thirds, 70%, seven out of 10 of our youth, first of all, we don't believe in them in their eyes because we're too focused on us. And we don't love them because we're too focused on loving ourselves. Mm -hmm. I believe you've actually preached on this several mm -hmm. times. Mm -hmm. So um, these people have a great need to belong and to be loved and to be right. And they don't know how to do it on their own, uh, particularly since they come from broken families or what we call socioeconomically challenged mm -hmm. families. So. Um, that's what it's all about. It's, it's a way to bring these young people together with people of faith and the love of Christ and just be there for them. Cool. And so this is within the context of um, coming alongside high school students, right? I mean, tell, tell us a little more of, of well, what, that, what that's you That's where you come in again <laughs> as you link me up with Tom Newton at Monterey High School. And I've been trying to do something like this even before I moved here 11 years ago. And, and Tom loved the whole idea. And Tom, of course, being a Christian, and you are there, all things new, on his campus, and he wants to expand that. It was perfect for us to say, let's have this discovery roundtable on the campus at Monterey High School. And that's just recently, as of last Wednesday, actually, was approved. And we're going to be starting the work, hopefully, uh, when the COVID restrictions permit them to get back in it. Right. And the, the word people say round table, you know, I get that look, you know, you, you could call it lots of stuff. Um, a round table is a form of communication where everybody at the table has equal status. The knights at a round table, they all put their weapons down and sat down at the table. So the idea is to have uh, these young people together with people from all things new uh, to just explore life together. It's, it's not a teaching issue. We're not telling them how to do anything. Uh, we're mostly listening, and, and I'll get to that a little bit later on. But just being there to let them know we care enough about them mm. to step into their world right. and, and risk. There's a huge risk in this, by the way. Mm. When you get to the point who should be involved, <laughs> we ain't looking for no scaredy cat here. <laughs> These are people with courage that are, that are willing willing to listen and willing to be wrong. Right. Yeah. So it's and just to kind of bring it from the also from the sort of like broader statistical, you know, surveys of, you know, national and international generations and all that stuff. One thing that I, I have heard directly from Tom Newton, the, the principal at Monterey right. High School is that the, the thing that students need most is someone to just show up and demonstrate genuine care yes. for their well-being and, and to show up and to just demonstrate 
genuine yeah. love. So um, I, I think it's it's clear that there's a, a lot of need, and especially as as we come out of the the pandemic and being sheltered in place, you know, students, you know, in high school, this is a, a very formative season for people to develop um, not just cognitive skills, but relationship and, and a sense of identity and, and moving forward. So there's a lot of really importance behind this. How do you see this as uh, an expression of, of our faith? Well, it fits um, the, the, the five practices and all things new. The two that I view it fits best is justice and kinship that we mm. love. Our family is extended beyond just the people who are related to us. Mm. Um, but I think it's important to look, why, why is this important? That's where you were going a minute ago. Um, I'll, I'll just quote from the proposal. Uh, it says that the, the, the round table is a special purpose event where these people, we call them seekers. Does that sound biblical? Cool. Mm -hmm. Seekers come together to explore the sources of their confusion, examine their doubts, and their anxieties in a safe, supportive setting surrounded by people who care for them and believe in them. And, that, and what Tom is saying is once you, once you show up, you're showing you're caring. You know, you're coming out of your world into their world, which, which is, I've been in that world. It's different. It is, uh, I've worked with Ellie Mitchell, who, who had a class uh, the, the fall before the pandemic. And she and I will be joining forces again. These people on, uh, are not unintelligent. They're not dumb. They're not stupid. They have not understood the system they're in because they've been given no, no parental support for the most part. But the key element of why this is important to us, why should we care? The California prison system judges the need for prison cells based on third grade reading scores. That's an absolute known open fact. You can ask any of them. And they're proud of it. It allows them to go before the legislature 15 to 20 years in advance and start planning prisons. Mm. And when the time comes, there's a prison. And we're, where are we gonna get all these people? Out of the high school. Mm. Uh, one of the teachers I've connected with this helped me design this up in Marysville teaches one of, they call a continuation school. We have one or two of those around here. Mm -hmm. And when she started, she said she was very naive. She wanted to be a very helpful person. So she asked them, you know, these are eighth and ninth graders, where do you see yourself in five years? And she says, the majority say in prison. Hmm. They see their life as having no life, no purpose. Hmm. No, you know, and, and that's where we come in. <clears throat> so people of faith, um, Tom Newton said that 70% of his students are unchurched, meaning they haven't had an experience of church. Um, and I, I think if we if we go in there, help them recognize they have two important skills that, that people of their age rarely have, including those that go to the other high schools around here and end up in the best colleges of the world. They have discernment skills and survival skills that they can teach others. Mm -hmm. They don't even see those as skills. So there's this is a skill development opportunity also. Great. Awesome. So as we're talking about trying to come alongside students in need to encourage support show them genuine care for their well-being uh you know who who should be involved with this ministry who should be involved with this program well i i would be tempted to say anybody who wants to but that that wouldn't be fair it, i think two things I, i've searched scripture and you know my favorite scripture james 1 22 be doers of the word and not hear only so if you're a person who, who wants to do something that's different than you've done before, give me a call. And number, <laughs> number two, the second scripture reference, James 1.19, uh, be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. If you think it's an opportunity to come in and straighten these kids out, don't bother, please. We need people who are really, really good at heartfelt listening, not necessarily to understand, but to accept. Mm. And, and when they get upset, which you will, I guarantee you, when, when you hear some of these stories, don't get angry because that's what they're used to. Mm. And, and when we, quote, 
from the outside world come in and get angry, guess who they think that's aimed at? Mm. Them. Right. So practice things to be a doer and be a good listener. Awesome. So those of you watching or listening, if, if you yeah. want to do something to sort of demonstrate a, a faith in Jesus to, to come alongside the, the statistically marginalized, if you want to uh, do that and you have some patience, you have some good listening skills and you have uh, compassion, really compassion yes. for those that, yeah. that are in need of love and support, then, uh, then perhaps this is for you. So uh, lastly, just real simply, how... What are the next steps? If someone wants to get involved, how can they get involved? Well, there's two parts. One, they, they can e send an email, let me know. I will send them a workbook. I developed a workbook. I need help mm -hmm. with people that do these things better than me to look at it and say, I like this. I, I got a lot of former students that are helping me. So my email address is worksjones, that's one word, W-O-R-X-J-O-N-E-S at comcast.net. And then if you want to know about the different roles and talk about this to me personally, just call my office, 831-747-2693, and we'll talk about it. Awesome. And this has not been done before to my knowledge. And what I would see long-term is that the Monterey community become a model for this. We're already just in discussions with some other high schools around here. And I can see it overlapping with what Brian Bajari is doing because he and I have talked about this. We're like <laughs> kinship. Um, and we could take students who have come through this and graduated and bring them back as participants. Um, meanwhile, hopefully they will have seen enough of the truth of Jesus Christ in their life through those who come from all things new and they'll be one of us. <laughs> Amen. Well, Tom, I appreciate your heart for coming alongside students to demonstrate that, that they are not forgotten, that they have incredible inherent value and worth and giftings. And we want to um, identify those, celebrate those, learn from those, and walk forward together in solidarity. And so Man. thank you for this vision that you that have. Beautiful. You, you put I, it beautifully. Thank you. <laughs> and and I, thanks for being a part of, of this. And uh, I'm, I'm excited to see what happens. So, well, you started it. Don't forget that. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's good. All right, Tom. Thanks. Man. All right. Bye-bye.